Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Who are you and what do you do? Um, and first of all, I'm an elderly man. <laughs> this last month, November, I was 80 years, became 80 years old. So I've uh, seen quite a bit of this world and I've been practicing as an artist. Uh, that's one of my main things. I was a teacher at the University of Saskatchewan and also practicing art. And I've been a Baha'i since I was 23. When I was a, a young boy, uh, I grew up on a farm in Saskatchewan. My father was a wheat farmer. So I was very much connected into my environment. The, the seasons like spring and fall and winter. And I became very observant of the wonderful beauty of nature. And, and I, I think that nature educates us. I, my first education was nature itself. And just living in, on the farm and seeing the seasons and the birds and uh, all of that was very wonderful. But I think I had an artistic spirit because I really responded. I, I think everybody does. Everybody likes nature, but, but I was very profoundly moved by it. Relating to the Joshua Bell story, would you have stopped listening at the Metro? I think I would have stopped, yes. I knew about Joshua Bell, and I just uh, attended a conference of his in uh, Carnegie Hall in October, and it was one of the most beautiful experiences I've had in my life, because his uh, performance was so perfect. The sound was so clear. There's a lot of similarity between painting and sculpture and music and the dance. You know, the same principles apply. So I don't know anything about music uh, specifically, but I respond to the perfection, the, the order of it, the composition, and the arrangement of the sound is beautiful. So I think I would have stopped. <laughs> So why do you think nobody would stop to listen to him play in the Metro for free, but they would pay hundreds of dollars to listen to him play it in the concert hall? In the subway, it, people are usually rushing to go from point A to point B, so... Uh, and I think it also has to do with perception. Uh, like, often people, um, if they have a certain uh, mindset, like, for example, I discovered as an artist that I could do a picture and make just black blobs, just all kinds of black blobs. But if I describe one of them, uh, if I develop one of them as a tree, then the viewer would look at all the black blobs and see trees. They would think this is a, a depiction of trees, whereas there was only one tree, the rest were just blobs. So I think that the people in the subway thought, oh, this is a street person. His music is obviously not very good because he's, he, he's a street person and he's, he's poor. And so they, they had that mindset and they brought the mindset of somebody that wasn't good and laid it on top of this guy. So, the lesson in that is that we have to be very alert because you can discover quality and beautiful things anywhere. What do you think is art? <laughs> well, that's a, um, that's a very big question because uh, it's, it's like saying, what, what is life? Uh, it's so huge. But, but uh, to put it in, in simple terms, or to answer it more directly, I think that art is a kind of prayer because in a prayer you are, you are supplicating uh, the Creator. See, what an artist does is he takes, or she, takes very raw materials. Uh, when you think about paint, paint is really just uh, from the mineral kingdom. It's, it comes from soils and and minerals and so on. So it's a very materialistic uh, 
uh, thing, and it doesn't doesn't say anything. So you take that material and you try to make a composition, and in the composition you try to um, have a unity. It, you bring a lot of things to the composition, and so many things that they're all kind of competing with each other. So you try to find a composition which will unite all of those parts into one thing. And when you, when you have unity, then you attract, it's almost as if you attract something from the spiritual world. So it's like a prayer, you, you lift up your hands and you ask for some kind of confirmation and if you receive that confirmation, you have a very, a very deep experience. You could call it a spiritual experience. So I think the purpose of art, or what art is, it's a discipline, uh, and its purpose is to lift the spirit. Or to, you know, like Muhammad said, music is a ladder to heaven. So if music is a ladder that you ascend to heaven, Painting and sculpture is the same thing. It, 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 uh, it's not in the scientific world, it's more in the, in the spiritual world. Well, the scientific world is spiritual also, but uh, it aims to um, express spiritual principles. That's what art is. Music, dance, it all has to do with uh, the expression of universal principles like harmony and rhythm and proportion, scale, texture, color, light, movement, all those things are spiritual principles. They're also in, in the world of science. But it's almost as if there are two expressions. You can talk about motion and the physicist would have all kinds of experiments about motion. But you can talk about motion with the musician, or the dance, or the painter, and you, you experience a different uh, idea uh, of, of motion. It, it's more on the poetic, spiritual side, rather than on the physics side. Now, not all art uplifts. It, it can deal with, with tragedy, uh, with, with uh, dark things, like Shakespeare, for example, and. Uh, you know, there's murders and so on in Shakespeare, but, but the whole art form is one of um, upliftment. And, you know, it, it becomes a metaphor for uh, explaining life and the, and the struggles that we have in life and so on. What kind of art do you do? Well, that's a good question. That's a big question too, because uh, in, in one way, I don't even know Exactly, but a big change happened in art in the middle of the 19th century. Um, art became more um, disconnected from uh, just simply representing or using the outside world. Um, and it went more inward. I mean, it always was inward, but it went more um, rather than just using the outside world as the subject matter, I think artists started using the, the spiritual world, the, the inner world, more. And so you, you had a big um, change away from um, uh, social commentary and historical paintings, uh, more towards abstract uh, form which could reflect spirit. My training was in the in the 1950s. I went to art school in 1954 and that was the time when abstraction, when uh, the so-called abstract expressionists were uh, getting worldwide attention for their work and it was very very disconnected from depiction of the world like a photograph would depict the world. This is a horizontal picture. Oh. 
it's a landscape kind of. You don't look at art and say, what is it? You open yourself and allow yourself to experience it. Because yeah. it's an arrangement of, of space and movement and texture and color and light. It's not, its purpose is not simply to depict. It's a single tree. But there is no, um, there's no such thing as a tree because it can be many, many things. Like you look at this one, there's a tree. But this, this is also a tree. But it's very different. So you ask yourself the question, what is a tree? And so if you were just depicting a tree like a photograph, you wouldn't have all this variety. See, this is more of a metaphor or because you don't just see the tree, you see the, the moon behind it. Oh yeah. So if somebody said uh, to you, uh, well, what is this? And you said, well, it's a tree, but that doesn't say very much, does it? <laughs> My first teacher, whose name was Noni Mulcaster, she took me into the library and showed me the work of Matisse and Picasso and Paul Klee, the work of modern artists, modern 20th century artists. And she said, this is very great art, this is very good. And I looked at it and it really inspired me, so I accepted it as important art. I didn't question it because it, it um, it gave me such a powerful feeling. So I was very inspired by 20th century art, which is not surprising. I was born in the 20th century, so, so the, uh, there's always something in the air. Every 50 years or so, there's a, there's a certain thing that a lot of people collectively get interested in. And so I was born into that period of uh, abstract painting, and uh, it suited my soul. And so, like I was telling you earlier, I grew up close to nature. So there is nature in my work, but there's also uh, the lesson of 20th century artists in my work. Uh, a person's art is as, is as complicated as they are. <laughs> How did you get involved in uh, the art that you do? Sometimes I think we're protected, you know, uh, like we have a, a guardian angel. Uh, you don't need to call it an angel, but um, sometimes if you're lucky, you can be guided. And I, uh, I was fortunate in that I wasn't a particularly good student. Like, usually I got C pluses or C minus. Sometimes I got a B, but it would be in literature, like poetry or writing. And we didn't have any art in the school. So I was a very average student. And um, because of that, I couldn't get into university. My grades were too low. So I, instead I went to a teacher's college because the requirements were lower, unfortunately. And in that teacher's college, uh, there was a compulsory art class. I had to take an art class. I didn't even want to take it, but I took it. And the minute I started painting, it was like I found who I was. Where do you find the inspiration for your art? The two big things yeah. that inspired me were nature, and the world of art. Like you can't be an artist without having a love for art, which sounds obvious, but, but there, are, there are, some of my art students said, we, we, we don't want to look at too much art because we don't want to be influenced, which, which is a ridiculous idea because if you were going to be a physicist, you want to know what the other physicists have done 
Because how could you, how could you develop yourself as a physicist uh, if you didn't know what other physicists were doing? So an artist has to know about art history, all the wonderful things that artists have done. And you absorb that. And as well as absorbing that, you, you are very open to nature. Um, I think the two things are, are very, very powerful. In fact, in the, in the Baha'i writings, uh, the Bab in one place says that nature was brought into existence. One of the reasons for nature is to delight the human heart. You know, everybody likes the sunset and likes looking at trees and all of that. And it's because it delights the heart and, and it, it stimulates the mind. So nature is a great teacher because nature reflects attributes of God. And so we're very, our soul is naturally attracted to God, whether we call it that or not. We, we, we are attracted. And so we see in nature the attributes of God. And that, that's why we love nature. And in art, we see the attributes of, of mankind, the, the, the human condition and the, and the spirit of man. So the, the, the attributes of God that are in nature and, and the accomplishments that the artists have made, those are two very powerful inspirations. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think art, or more specifically beauty, can make the world a better place? Oh, definitely, yes. Uh, if you look into history, you find that all these different civilizations, when they were at their best, like sometimes called the classical stage, or their stage of great maturity, uh, when they were at that stage, they always had a very uh, powerfully developed art. If you think of, of the Greek civilization or the Inca, Mayan, or some of the Native American civilizations, some of the work of uh, Southwestern United States, the, the Native Americans, they had beautiful art. And their art was often very much related to their principles of life. Uh, principles of order and beauty and harmony and respect for nature and uh, love of the creation and uh, all of that. So definitely I really believe that art can change the world there, because it's a, a way of expressing attributes of God, same as nature is. Uh, nature is God's art. But art reflects the nature of man, the condition of his soul, and the fact that he's been created in the image of God. And so when he, when he involves himself or herself in making art, they're expressing the attributes of God. And if you express the attributes of God, you are contributing to the community. And you're uplifting the community. So it, it can, it can if, if the communities become like a work of art, and if, if, uh, if people understand the principles of, of harmony and unity and motion and beauty, all those things, that, and, and they, if they understand them, then that can be reflected in the way the community develops. So I would say it has a profound effect it can have a profound effect on, on life. It doesn't often because the world right now is very materialistic and the world is more involved in material qualities rather than spiritual qualities. And so right now, you, you art is more of a, a prestige symbol or an, uh, a commodity that's bought and sold at high prices. Do you think there's a difference between arts and entertainment? I don't think there's anything more entertaining than something of high quality. Uh, you know, like you could say that a popular piece of music is entertaining. A lot of things are just entertaining when they may only last for five minutes, but you can't keep coming back to them. 
Uh, so uh, a profound work of art entertains, but over a long period of time. Like Rembrandt, as a painter, no matter how many generations come, like you will like Rembrandt, you're only 13, but you will like Rembrandt. Rembrandt's paintings are hundreds of years old. But you may not, two years from now, you may not like something that was very entertaining because it comes and goes. It's not deep enough. A lot of things that are just entertaining are not deep enough. You can't keep coming back to them year after year after year and get something from them because there, a lot of entertainment is very shallow and very much in the moment. Do you think anyone can be an artist or do you think there's an artist in all of us? Yes, I think there's an artist in all of us. In the way that I was talking earlier, that because nature reflects the attributes of God and we are created in the image of God, therefore we have the capacity inside of us to respond to art because art also expresses the attributes of God. So in that sense, everybody, if they have the, a proper art education, they all can respond to art, but they can't necessarily be an artist. I, I think people have different capacities. I, I could never be a mathematician uh, or an engineer. I don't think I could be because it's not in my nature. So I think different people have different capacities. Every soul is unique and some souls are, are, are created with a capacity for engineering or for physics or for music or for the visual arts or whatever. And that's the way creation is. This difference between one soul and another is necessary in order to create a civilization. Everybody can't be the same. So I don't think everybody can be a good artist. Um, I think it's, it's partly a gift, but you have to work on it as well. Like, like a lot of people have gift. They're gifted in mathematics or in music, but they never become a mathematician or a good musician because they don't work at it. I mean, they say that it's, you only need 1% inspiration and 99% work. <laughs> it only ended up looking that way at the very end. So do you have like an idea before you make the... Well, not really. Uh, I wouldn't say that, not, that it's blind, because I have the last, like say, if I were to work today, these two are, are the most recent. And so if I, if I started to work today, I would have these two in my mind. And so in that sense, I have something to start with. But I would not be tied to that. I would allow myself to be free and to uh, uh, these works that I have just done might be the jumping off place. But then I allow myself to evolve. Everything is an evolution. And uh, one very famous artist said that he, he was not happy with his work unless the original idea that he started with is gone and a new idea is in its place. An idea which he could not have thought of beforehand. It, it had to evolve. 